Warm welcome, uh, everyone, and especially warm welcome to you, Oksana uh, Sabushko. This is uh, a Thank conversation you. that I have been looking forward to a lot. You are the author of these amazing books that are now ones. One is already published before in Sweden, 2006, Feldstudier i Ukrainsk Sex. Uh, and a new... Uh, I wrote a foreword to the second edition. Yeah, it's, it's Which it's I strongly updated. recommend even if you are not planning to read the book. Yeah, but you will plan to read the book after this conversation, I am uh, more than sure. And the other one is called uh, Den längsta av resor. And this one is a little bit more uh, on the situation in, in the Ukraine, which we will try to penetrate from different angles here in this conversation. Um, can I start by asking you, uh, you are both um, uh, a scientist and you, you have a expertise in, in the literature. I'm not a scientist. No, but you have a, a re literature researcher, more or less. Uh, you come from some kind of academia and you have been uh, teaching Well, also. I do have, yeah, I do have a degree. Uh, well, but I never, you know, um, it's, it's not that I'm not taking it seriously. I've done a couple of, uh, uh, of cultural studies and I have to say that my philosophical background, I've graduated from, philosophy, from the philosophical department and I've done my dissertation um, uh, on philosophy and philosophy of arts. Uh, and yes, it does help, um, you know, in seeing, in perceiving things in broader context. That's the only thing that you learn at the, de at the Department of Philosophy, in fact. <laughs> yes, because what I was aiming for was to, like this position of being both from the academia in some sense and, and then also being a, a writer, an author, an artist in a sense, uh, and uh, addressing life from a more aesthetic point of view. I think this gives you this perspective of, of uh, doing analysis and also perhaps seeing uh, life and conflicts that we will now discuss uh, in, in uh, so many ways. Uh, so I would like to ask you a little bit if you could just share on your own perspective on what's going on, on the, the, the horrible cri uh, war and war crimes that are going on and, and, and Putin's war in, in the Ukraine. Well, I wouldn't say it's it Putin's war, and this book is about, um, uh, well, the need to change the whole discourse around this war. Uh, because, uh, in fact, well, maybe I have to explain that I author over 20 books, uh, like fiction, uh, poetry, uh, mostly poetry. I started as a poet and I still keep going. Um, uh, fiction, uh, non-fiction, uh, well, with cultural studies, you know, that well already mentioned. Um, essayism, I love, I love doing essays. So, in fact, this book is an essay. It is very much an essay. Uh, but that's also the first book uh, that uh, I wrote at the publisher's request. Uh, this spring, uh, you know, when uh, the, uh, the whole world uh, was taken aback, uh, you know, with what happened on February 24, um, uh, one of the European publishers uh, addressed my agent asking uh, whether I can do uh, something uh, like pamphlet or something, something quick, something quick and brief because market is market and uh, market calls for immediate answers to the most burning questions. Uh, and, uh, and yes, and Western uh, readers were totally disoriented and there was absolutely nothing on Ukraine in the bookstores of, the, uh, of, of most European countries. Uh, so could I do something to explain to the Western audience, everything that has been missed about this war. That is, uh, well, broader context, cultural context, historical context, and I was like, well, 
um, I'm not I'm not Timothy Snyder. I'm not from academia, you know. I stay with uh, Camus uh, saying, if you want to be a philosopher, write a novel. A novel is the most philosophical of all genres. It, uh, it really allows you, well, uh, to improvise uh, intellectually on many levels and in many dimensions at the same time. Uh, so, um, uh, well, uh, by the way, uh, yeah, um, okay, uh, so probably it's going to be next year, but uh, my uh, M Magnus Opus, uh, the Museum of Abandoned Secrets, is to be translated, is now in preparation and is to be translated into Swedish. So probably next year I will be here telling about, you know, how I see the art of novel. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, well, like my, my uh, answer, you know, to this challenge was uh, what I can do can be this uh, big history from, from a very done from a very personal standpoint, from a standpoint of a, a writer, from a standpoint of an author who uh, on the morning of uh, Thursday, um, it was Thursday, uh, February 24, was awakened uh, in her hotel room in Warsaw where she has come the day before to promote her newly launched book because the devils of history wanted my new Polish book to appear, uh, to be launched uh, on February 23, and I arrived to Warsaw uh, by what later proved to be the last flight from Kiev to the European Union wow. then available, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then I found myself like, you know, cut off uh, not only from my country, from my family, from my readership, but most importantly from my, uh, most importantly for the writing purpose, from my uh, library, which was left back home and from uh, my archive because I did not take my laptop with me. Oh. Uh, I came for three days yeah. being, dis being scheduled for 19 interviews and two readings and of course what was the point? I came with the hand luggage. Yeah. Mm. And now you're so, out. Yeah. So what can what can a writer in this situa in this situation, a writer with a hand luggage, a writer stuck uh, in the air, in the middle of nowhere, uh, well, uh, not knowing, you know, uh, what will be tomorrow, what can this writer do with this historical challenge, uh, turning her suitcase uh, into some kind of an international tribune, yeah, and addressing the Western readers, her Western readers, and trying to explain um, uh, the big history from capital H uh, from the standpoint of her personal experience and uh, mostly you know this book I think is um, uh, well my response to this challenge uh, so you can take it both uh, as uh, both as history as an essay as a memoir and uh, well whatever you tell me yeah and now you're living this this metaphor in a sense because you're out on a book launch tour and you're traveling you told me you are planning to to visit yeah. over nine yeah. countries in, yeah. in a row and, yeah. the, and the travel continues so I'm thinking you're in a position where you're you're trying to navigate in the in something that is the most acute si situation any human being can face, being in a war in a war zone. Mm -hmm. But but the war is in you uh, since you sure. are not in in the war, uh, mm -hmm. so to speak. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, you told me a little bit about the hazards, like the more practicalities of it. Uh, uh, 
travel to, to, to just leave Kiev where you are based uh, in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the situation and, and how do you go about it existentially? I can imagine there's so much adrenaline and you check online for news all the time, but how do you cope with the war in, in Ukraine being then inside of you? Uh, well, you know, since it is, uh, since it's been inside of me for some, I would say, 20 years by now, uh, uh, because yeah, I've done my part in uh, trying to, you know, to ring these warning bells uh, in different kind of writings, you know, not just in like uh, um, articles uh, for the newspapers, but also in novels and uh, stories. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, I mean, uh, it is uh, the scale of this war is actually still underestimated in my opinion for it is no uh, it is none of the local conflict it is the war of civilization and it can be seen you know on the everyday level uh, it is uh, it is the war between life and death it is uh, the war uh, it is the war uh, against the war of the young uh, democracy, young and f young, very vital, very vibrant democracy, uh, in which um, the um, free, uh, very important thing. You know, one of the reasons you can you can really see it now with this with the recent victories of the Ukrainian army uh, that free people make much better soldiers than those imprisoned, than the slaves, than those used just to obey uh, the uh, orders uh, of, from their supervisors out of fear and, um, well, kind of taught to be taught to be divorced from any kind of personal responsibility uh, so the army uh, where tanks stop to uh, take a hedgehog out of the road I don't know whether you watch these videos I mean it is one of the it is actually the first war in human history which you can follow online, online. Uh, absolutely, you can be in, you can, uh, I mean, if you want to, uh, well, and for a writer, you know, it is an uh, inexhaustible source of material no previous war had ever been offered into our predecessors. Uh, so you can really, you know, see fantastic plots, amazing plots, and yes, the tank the tank stops and uh, the soldier, Ukrainian soldier gets out uh, to push the hedgehog out of the road and then tan the tank resumes uh, uh, and, uh, and it proves that this army is stronger then uh, the army of this, you know, highly militarized empire with this aggressive discourse and uh, and uh, and now now it is uh, it is a material for, for for learning a lot and lots of things are still being missed, you know, in the narration. Mm. So, like, culture is too slow to learn uh, the language and it is still the language from the World War II uh, that, that uh, is more, mostly applied to the current war of, uh, that, uh, of Russia against Ukraine. It's much more complicated, uh, richer, uh, more subtle, more refined, uh, uh, rich in varieties than that. What kind of alternatives can we offer then to, to promote this more 
uh, humanity driven by empathy, by solidarity? Like what kind of leadership do the world need? Because we need to, to be part of that story, as you're saying. I mean, the, the regime in, in Russia is very strong when it comes to capture, nar narration capture, in a way, and, and steal the story. How can we take it back, and how can we promote those values that are so important for the uh, world? You've already, you've already said the Kiberard story. The story has been totally distorted. Until now, you know, the story that has been served to the West and which the West has bought from Putin was the story of the, you know, grand invincible Russia, which has the right to uh, take care of its former colonies the same way, the same language that has been in usage in Europe in the 30s when Hitler was claiming his rights either to Austria or to Sudetenland or whatever. Absolutely the same language which really, no, literally verbal quotations, literally verbal coincidences. I, I give some examples uh, in this book because, of course, as a writer, I'm particularly sensitive to language and I see when, when the lies is uh, when the lies are being burst on the level of language, mm. that's the level where the war, you know, comes into being. Yeah. The, well, it, it might take then a generation uh, or half a generation until, you know, it translates itself into bombs and uh, rocket shelling. Well, but it all starts at the linguistic level. Orwell was damned right. He was the first to have noticed that. He was the first to have become hysterical, you know, about all these changes uh, um, uh, creeping into the English of his times that he was witnessing. And, and he's, he's done uh, the whole set of articles uh, in his time. Well, and then, you know, this famous part on Newspeak in 1984. Mm, uh, well, that was a, a great intuition. And, uh, well, like he is one of my, of my literary heroes uh, mm. from the past. Uh, precisely because of that. I'm sorry to inform that this conversation has now ended, but oh, my goodness. The, the conversation will continue between you and your readers. Uh, and the books, as said, are, are for sale somewhere around here. Uh, and maybe you're there also to sign them uh, uh, for, for the readers who are interested. Yeah, sure. I mean, and uh, yeah. I know that you have mentioned that literature is soft power, so we need to both uh, use our own words and how we express things in a very careful way when we write, when we talk, but we also need to pick very carefully which books we read. So I that's, strongly that's recommend. That's a very good point. <laughs> yes. That's a very good point. Oksana yeah, uh, for saying this. Sabushko, thank you so mm -hmm. much for coming and, and sharing with us. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me.